Oh, and that's that's a good bit of research because it is a champion he's been playing a lot of. And actually, now I look, think back to it, Thresh has been played by Conan almost consistently. It's been his main support. Mm. We haven't actually seen too many good Thresh players, at least today. They hasn't really been working for people, but still, it's always a good champion to have. And with a player like Conan, he can make plays on it. And Kassadin actually being the last one here, so W don't want to take the chance against it. Could be because Cloud9 actually played it in the Super Week. Mm, they did, and then they actually said it wasn't very good. Yeah, but <laughs> maybe they didn't see that. But something they have absolutely played is Kha'Zix. High on Kha'Zix. It could also be Meteos, because Meteos yeah. has been playing Kha'Zix as well. So that's immediately leaving it open. But speaking of leaving things open, yeah. they left Renekton open, and that is the number one pick for China. Renekton and also Caitlyn. Yes. So you have two of the strongest laners in each individual lane. Yes, okay, you got Kha'Zix possibly onto high if it's in the mid lane you want it, but you're just giving up so good laners for WE. And they will use this. They will try to really win the early game with this. They can also lane swap. Renekton is very good in 1v2. He's very hard to dive. And also Caitlyn is having so much siege potential onto the turret, and she's so safe as well. Well, Rengar, we saw as the number one pick during the, the Season 3 World Championships, yeah. and it has been argued that North America and Europe both don't really know how to properly use Rengar, keep that pressure going, which the Chinese and Korean team absolutely do. It's a unique playstyle they use, especially in China, where they focus more on actually roaming with the Rengar and set up kills elsewhere than just staying in your lane and pushing it out and winning 1v1, which is what most European and any top laners do. They focus on winning the lane, pushing it down, apply pressure that way, China, they will roam around. Well, we see our first Morgana of the day, okay. something we expected to see very early on, but this is the first time it's been picked. It's going to be for Lemonation, and of course, that also means Gragas will be selected for high. So, a little bit surprised they early picked Morgana before they see the support from WE, but obviously they want to try and counter some hard engage from them. Annie and Leona, Annie versus Morgana, I like it on Annie's side here, so it can be risky for them, but at least they... But pretty much sure they want Morgana here, they want to try and stop some early aggression or some aggression from WE. And of course you have Gragas with the ultimate to also, you know, more or less reset team fights. If, if they don't want the team fight, they can just pop the ultimate and then disengage back. Well, we've seen Yasuo this morning from the Chinese. It was Zitai that played it, but there's no knockups to go alongside him this time around. And he also being slopped in. Yeah, so I don't actually have anything to go with it. Mm. I've seen Yasuo jungle. Beforehand, it could potentially be jungle-wise. I think we actually have to touch on with Gragas here. Okay, Shivani got locked in. Never mind, I was about to say, it could have been top lane Gragas. Balls have been playing it in scrims, I know for a fact. And he's been liking it quite a lot, but it's going to be Shivana top lane, of course. And then it's actually going to be Kha'Zix jungle for Meteors. We've seen it two times already today. Yep. Been working okay. Well, and I then would, not really. Insect did pretty well with it. Insect did okay early game, but then when he got to team fights, he got caught out a lot of times. He couldn't really get the resets he wanted to, and actually ended up ah. giving up a lot of kills. And also for Ionia, it didn't work at all to cast the jungle. And the Wukong was the final pick. Makes complete There's sense. That means it is going to be the knockup. Yasuo in that mid lane. That is all he needs to pounce on. Definitely. It's all you just want to go and engage with Wukong. Yasuo follows up, and you dive towards the back line here. You have the tippers from Ani. You have Renekton obviously dashing in. And then you have Caitlyn, the most safe AD carry to just stay in the back and more or less be herself. Try and survive for as long as possible while the rest of WE just piles onto the back line of Cloud9. Well, yeah, very quick picks and bans. And this is actually something that Cloud9 always do. This is why I love watching them in North mm -hmm. America because they lock them champions in quick. They knew exactly what they wanted to do. And WE doing the same. No trolling from the teams. I love that. Edward, take note. <laughs> Well, Cloud9, for a fact, I know they have an analyst who's doing a lot of work with the team when it comes to pick and bans. So they always have something prepared. This time around, they knew they wanted the Sivir, of course. They wanted the Morgana. They picked it early on. So they have this bot lane where if you land a binding, you can follow up with a boomerang blade from Sivir. It's a lot of damage early on. And then, of course, with Gragas, with the likes of Morgana to counter engage, they can stop the fights if they don't want to fight them here when Wukong actually goes in and... Cyclones around them. And do not fear, ladies and gentlemen. It is Meteos in the jungle. I know a lot of people are fearful that he may have lost his mojo, his power, with those blonde highlights being removed from his hair. But it is still him. I did speak to him this morning. I can confirm it is still Meteos. It is still Meteos. That's good. <laughs> he is going to be playing on Mecha Kha'Zix. We'll see how that works out for them. Who do we expect here? We saw, of course, earlier on, it was Mitch went with... Apple pie. Apple pie. Frogan went with China. Looking at the picks, I would give it to WE. I really like the early game. Very strong lanes. They have Yasuo against Karagas. It's a good lane for Yasuo. We have 
Renekton on top lane, who is very dominant. He will be able to pressure Shivana a lot early game. And then, of course, you have Annie and Caitlyn bot. So much poke, so much damage you have early on. You can apply on to Cloud9. And he's going to rely a lot on Cloud9 now, doing very strong individual plays. And also Meteors on Kha'Zix. He can gank, he has quite some damage, but he doesn't bring too much, he doesn't bring any CC when he goes in, so it's hard for him to set something up early on, and that can be an issue for them. Well, we've seen a lot of jungle invades, a lot of switching around with lanes, but as of yet, it seems that it may well be a standard start for these two teams. We can see, of course, at the moment, High Tell a Lie is down the bottom. There's, a, of course, one thing we have to highlight. When, you, when we look at the combos, we have more or less full physical damage lineup for W. You have Renekton, you have Wukong, Yasuo, and Caitlyn. So if Cloud9 can get to late game, if they can start stacking up the armor, make sure they can avoid a lot of the damage of World Elite, we can have some very close team fights. So what do we make of this? They're going to go for a 2v1 mid lane combo. So they're going to try and shut down that Yasuo while we see High. He's going to go down that bottom and in that 2v1 combo. But it seems that WE may try and rotate on this one. Yeah, if they can actually spot them out, they will be able to go to mid if that's what they want to do. But Yasuo should be able to farm fairly well on the turret. And now actually, Elimination, can he catch him? Nope. Dark Binding does not land. Conan holds the stun. And you see that spell these edge. Oh, they're going to go on towards Wei Zhao, forcing the flash very early on out of Wei Zhao. That's a good play from Cloud9. So the early body slam picked up by High here meant he could force away the flash. Very good play. And now they're actually moving to bot here, so they want to do standard lanes. No flash onto Wei Xiao. We could see possibly Meteors moving down early on, try an early gank, and then get Cloud9 ahead. But Ruo's going for the invade here, a late invade, and I'm not too sure whether it's going to get countered out here. We can see the Meteos, he's gone for the red buff himself. So we'll see whether Ruo's managed to steal himself a mark for the Meteos, who's ready and waiting for this one. As it stands, he is taking his red buff and completely unaware of this one. No help from either jungler either, so they're all on their own. Mid lane is also getting a lot of aggression. Sukin being very aggressive on high early on, of course, he took that body slam, we saw it, which means he's going to have to be very careful against a melee champion. And the thing to note, actually, Cloud9 didn't have any vision of Wukong going in towards the blue buff here, so we actually see Meteors going out there because he thinks it up. The only thing he knew is that, or he actually thought that Wukong started red buff because they have a ward at the enemy blue buff, they didn't see him there, so now he's coming in there, no blue buff, it means free early buffs to WE. Yeah, it means he's going to be in all sorts of trouble in that jungle, it's a good start for Ruo. Good counter play, and honestly, he's not in any position to deal with it either. You can see, you know, unless he goes rushing for that blue buff in a counter, which is very, very dangerous style. Don't expect him to go for that. Also, look here, starting items up in the top lane. Shivana, Doran Shield have to play passive early on. Renekton, on the other hand, Doran's blade. He's just straight up. He wants to fight. He wants to push the lane down constantly. We could see Wukong moving up there later, trying to dive balls if they push him all the way down to the turret, and he drops low. Bottom lane, we're also seeing the aggression. Wei Zhao and Conan pushing, pressuring up Sneaky and Lemonation with that Morgana. Something we expected to see a lot of Morgana this weekend. 4.3 is a big patch for Morgana. A lot of teams have been playing it in scrims, but as of yet, this is the first time we're seeing it. Yeah, and the trick you can do with Morgana and the Spell Thief Edge that he's starting with is when you put down your W, like we see here actually, it procs really, really fast. Every half second, and it counts for your Spell Thief. So you get the gold, you also get the additional damage onto them, so you have a lot of poke in the lane with Morgana early on. That's very, very strong. And the funny thing is, Korea and China, they don't like Morgana at all. Nope. They don't play it at all. It's only Europe and NA, so we'll see how much they can actually do with it. Dark Binding not landing, and they straight away turn that aggression back on towards Lamination. So quick throw out Dark Binding. And this is something they talked about. This is what they argue. The fact that Dark Binding can be dodged easily. It's an easy skill shot because it's slow, slow moving. Yeah, but then again, you bring your ultimate when it gets to team fights. Laning wise, if you miss your Dark Binding, you are open for harass. But that's where the spell feed with your W now, when you put it on both people, you can actually get quite some good damage in there. Might be going for a fight here. Meteor's coming around the side. He's going to try and go in towards him. It's Conan they're focusing on so far. He jumps up towards Wei Zhao. Remember, Wei Zhao does not have that. Will he get him? No! Doesn't manage oh, to get almost. it. Wow! Boomerang Blade rattling through him. The Wei Zhao survives. So the barrier for Wei Zhao was still up. He used the flash early on. That's why Meteor's came down here early for the gank. But barrier was still ready and it made him survive. High going very aggressive on that. Sukim there, you can see he's got himself a level advantage so far. Sukim's gonna hit level 5 any second now, but this is good pressure coming out from High in that mid lane. High's actually doing a very good job with this Gragas. He needs to be careful. He already used Body Slam. He already used Body Slam, has to flash out of it. That's a bit of a mistake by High, just as I sing his praise. Well, 
Flash gone for him now, so he needs to be careful once we have level 6 onto Wukong, level 6 onto Sukim on Yasuo. You can set up some very strong ganks because Wukong goes in, pops ultimate, and you just instant jump with Yasuo and just pile a lot of damage onto them. So he needs to be careful now, but still, body slam is a good way to escape even without the flash. Now, Medios is doing a great job considering he had his blue taken away from him. He's keeping up the farm. He's just a little bit behind Ruo, but you can see in levels, but you can see in terms of farm, he's kept up there. Lemonation warding out that dragon, and again, going back towards the bottom lane. Both AD carries picking up the Vampiric Scepter. So they both oh! the and oh, we shall. Damage on Wei Zhao is not going to quite be enough. He doesn't have barrier or flash now, and he is very low in lane. They're going to fancy pushing this one. And Cloud9 have been doing a very good job of shutting him down early. First with the flash, forced away, and then Medias with the first gank, and now good binding from Elimination, followed up by Sneaky's damage, doing a very good job of trying to shut him down. Also having a good trade with Salmay in that top lane as well. Salmay has gone back on himself, that pickaxe early on. Here comes Ruo. This is what they needed. They needed a little bit of respite because Sneaky and Lamination are doing a number on Wei Zhao so far. Again, Boomerang Blade la lashes through Wei Zhao. Dark Binding landing on Ruo. They're trying to keep that aggression away, but Cloud9 are doing a great job in lane. Yeah, Elimination have been on fire with the bindings here. He's landing so many of them. One more coming in here. Wei Zhao has another way to actually stay alive. So, pressure from Cloud9 early on, seemingly working out, despite the fact Ruo did invade the jungle early on of Meteos. Meteos keeping himself very relevant in this one, has just backed off, and now he's on a bit of an invade of his own. The thing is, he doesn't have the timer on this red buff, because he didn't actually know when Wukong did it, because Wukong started his own blue, but now two people rotating top here. Level 6 Renekton, though, it's very hard to gank him. But Meteos and Haya there, the damage is available, there is explosive cask if they're gonna go for it. Salmei realizing the danger, there's only three minions, it's a small wave. Dominus being popped already, jumping on towards the Meteos, not catching the Glora, he will get the kill. First blood goes to Bald, and that was nicely done. Very nice gank from Cloud9. Chalmay, he knew they were there, he popped the ultimate beforehand, but still they managed to come in with three people and get the kill. So good play by Cloud9. Very aggressive early start. Sukim putting pressure on towards that turret. Meanwhile, in that mid lane, and now looking to try and catch on towards balls. He knows that ultimate is down, and he quickly gets vision of them as he returns to lane. Not going to go aggressive, though. And absolutely perfect. Actually, Shivana picks up the first one here and will help her a lot in the 1v1 against Renekton. We know Shivana will outscale him, outscale Renekton later on in the game, so he, everything he can get here early on will help him and will also help Cloud9. Because once Spalls can actually 1v1 Renekton, he will be able to have all the pressure in the lane. So, blue buff is gonna get taken by High there. I was just waiting, couldn't quite see the barrel being planted. Medios, we'll keep our eye on Medios, see which way he levels this one actually, because we did see the ultimate being leveled, being evolved by Insect earlier on as his first. It is gonna be the E, the Wings. Yeah, so he will be able to get resets in the team fights whenever he, if someone dies actually, so that's good for him. If we look here at Yastor, we actually have a Vampiric Scepter as the first item for some sustain. Normally you see the early static shift, so you have this upfront burst early on, but he won't have it this time around. He's delaying it a little bit, but now Wukong closing in. There's a ward though, so Spalls will spot him out. Yeah, Dragon Descent also available, just going to use that Burnout to run away and actually stand and stare at Ruo saying, yeah, you dare come to my top lane, I'll keep you at bay. Mid lane, we still see Zukim. He has started to develop a bit of a CS advantage over High because he went for that rope, didn't get the kill, only got the assist, which means Zukim at the moment has himself a small advantage. And he should be able to just keep farming here, but High will also be able to wave clear. The more levels you get on Gragas, the better yard wave clearing. And also with the blue buff, he can just constantly put up the barrels, clear the waves. Down bot lane though, the fact that Sneak is actually ahead in CS is very impressive. Him and Elimination together and with the gang from Media has been doing a very good job of countering, pressuring Wei Xiao because he didn't have to flash early. Looks like Ruo is going to be taking the blue buff for himself. That's not going to be gifted across to Sukim, so we'll see if he makes use of that refresh on the Cyclone, which is available. I'm expecting this bottom lane gank may well be coming shortly. And if he can actually sneak down there, there's no ward in the bushes, so if he can actually get in range, he will be able to at least follow up for a tibus. But once again, binding, the tormented soil, and then the boomerang blade from Sneaky. Yeah, and half the hit point shredded off him. He does have flash and barrier back available to him, though, Wei Zhao, and he will continue that farm. And like you said, Sneaky, keep it up in farm. Silver against Caitlyn is impressive on its own. The fact that it's Wei Zhao is even more impressive. Yeah, Caitlyn normally is the pick you want to have against Sivian lane because you have such a long range advantage that you can just constantly poke away. But they've just been doing a very good job. And again, credit to Elimination, this Morgana, landing so many bindings. Sukim 
maybe trying to be baited in here. Instead, it's the top lane that it seems that Meteos is heading for. He's going to be looking towards that red buff. You can see Zukim though keeping that farm and high. Starting to respect him a little bit here. He knows the damage that Yasuo has, but Meteos, he's looking to go. Dominus already used on the tower. So we will see actually if Samway decides to back off. Once he sees Meteos, he's actually staying for now. They can go for this one. They're going to wait on this one. Dragon Descent is available. They need the minions there. Ruo does react to this one. Meteos shows himself a little early. High and Sukim still continuing to just pounce back and forward in that mid lane. Still the big advantage for Sukim in terms of farming. He's still continuing to get that aggression on high, using that wind wall to make sure no barrels roll towards him. Yeah, look how fast he puts it in. And when he puts it right in front of Gragas, he actually stops the ultimate as well because he will fly into the wall and gets completely just destroyed. So there's no chance here for high to actually do anything back to him and knock him into the turret or anything. We need to see some aggression from Wukong though. He's level 7. We haven't actually seen a gank. Despite him having his ultimate and having so strong ganks now. And this is actually a reverse of what we used to see from WE. They tend to go crazy aggression. Doesn't always happen from uh, objective control either. They tend to just pile in for them kills. We saw it with IG earlier on. Medios is going to flash away from this one. Uses that ultimate to get that invisibility. He hasn't leveled it up yet. Sukum's going to flash for this one. He's going to go deep. He will get the kill. The Ignite's going to run. It's an easy kill. Sukum now. Oh, Windwall's not going to work out. And High comes in. Straight counter. Explosive cast. Finishes the deal. So Sukum actually couldn't pop his ultimate onto Medios because of his stealth. He popped in when he got knocked up there. So very good play by him. And it simply meant that Sukum had to dive in. High could come in for the revenge kill. And now Cloud9 picking up a kill. Yes, they lost Medius, but High now got an early kill, and it's very good for him. What? Barrel landing on Ruo as well, forces him away from this one. Dragon, a potential here. Medios is back alive and heading straight towards it. Ruo is going to take them wolves to try and get some of that lifesteal back. It seems that Cloud9 won't go for this one. Balls has had a bit of a trade with Salmei in this top lane. Salmei has just returned from Bayern, which is being very healthy. Neither are making a move towards this Dragon, which is... Got Lemonation clearing the pink wards. As yeah, so Lemonation getting a little bit of vision control here for Cloud9. There's still two wards left though from WE, so they need to clear them out if they want to go for this dragon. Otherwise, WE will be able to react, come in there, join the fight, and then it can be very scary against this very strong combo at the moment for WE with Wukong, of course, with Renekton, and also Yasuo, despite him actually needing a few items and delaying. Again, he's a little bit behind in items compared to normally when you see the early static shift. Salmay continuing to bully balls in his top lane. Using Dominus against that Dragon Descent, both are about to wear out, but Bulls is sticking around here. This is dangerous, dangerous play against Samai, who is fully stacked and ready to go. But look who's moving up here. High is coming up from base. They might want to try and bait Samai to actually dive balls, and then High is there, joins in, and picks off the kill on him. He takes the bait, but is it too early? I think it is. Bulls is going to go down, and now... Well, High comes in, but I don't think he's got the damage. Explosive cask on towards Xiaomei. Xiaomei, he's looking to get that slice of dice, waiting for the minions to come in. High has got him. He's got his number. But, well, Balls risked it a little too much. And now two members from Cloud9 were up in the top lane. It means WE can move towards this dragon. Pink Ward clears out the ward from Cloud9. The vision is now gone, except for the ward they just put into the dragon pit here. But should be a dragon for WE, so they instantly react here. And the fact that Cloud9 lost... Ball top in the top lane simply means Dobby wins out. Instant objective control, but High is still pushing that top lane turret, so they may try and gain something back from it. Not too sure he's got the minions to take it this time around. He will have the next wave if he wants to stick around, which he's going to do. And we see Medios, he's covering off that mid lane, so he's keeping Sukim away from that mid turret. Medios is doing really well in farming as well. Now with some solo XP, very good for him actually. He's going aggressive here. Well, he's going to go aggressive. Has he got enough? I'm not too sure. Sukim does keep him at bay, and you can see Medios had to put a lot into it. He actually counters Kha'Zix fairly hard, of course, that well, force, I think it's called, is it the force on the wind or whatever the hell it is that builds up, just counters him quite hard. And now, high moving actually back to mid lane. He took the top turret with the minions here, so very good move from him after getting the kill onto Renekton. Smart by him. They did lose the dragon, however, but they have 500 gold headed this early game. And we talked about how strong WE are early on, so it's very good to see Cloud9 actually doing so well. And with this Morgana pick when we get to team fights, if we can get some blue, some very good black shields from Elimination, making sure that a key target is not getting locked off or CC'd, Cloud9 might be able to turn around and actually win the fights. Quick win wall from Sukim, dashes away from that one, not letting high anywhere near it. This bottom lane, we haven't seen a great deal of it for a while, and actually has gone fairly quiet. Despite the early pressure elimination was put down, it's still kept fairly even between the two. Very even, and that's just fine for Cloud9, because Sivir, you just want to get the early farm here against this Caden. So very good, and going aggressive again. Wei Zhao caught out, he's going down. Finally, they managed to get the kill on it. It's Lemonation that actually picks it up. 
with the tormented soil. Irony. But once again, the bot lane from Cloud9 are doing everything correct against Wei Xiao here. They punish him every single time, and now they even got a kill. Yes, onto elimination, but it's still a kill. But in terms of difference between the two, I feel his gold must be quite considerably high. Yes, it is. He's got almost a thousand gold more because he got that spell to Edge early on. He's been keeping that pressure on. We see that Conan has picked it up, but he's very late doing so. So he's not really going to benefit too much from it. Actually, if I recall correctly, Conan started with the spell seed, but it's a lot easier for Morgana to get the stacks down because you just put down your torment yes. soil early, where Annie actually has to either use a spell or auto tag onto you to proc it. Yeah, just looking at the difference between the two, it's almost 200 plus more gold that Lemonation's picked up with that spell thief. So of course, he upgraded it as well, which is a 500 gold investment, which kind of levels itself out, actually. And we actually need to see if Lemonation wants to keep it or if she's going to sell it after the laning phase, upgrade into or buy a Talisman instead, which benefits the team more with the utility, with the move speed. Also really helps him on Morgana. We need to see what he's doing with the item later. First shot on this mid lane turret. All of Cloud9 rotating in there. They're going to try and take it down as quick as possible. Meteor's tanking it out. Doesn't fancy it when three members of WE show up. We also see that Sao Mei is making his way down here. That's actually leaving Balls to just free farm in the top lane. And for Balls, it's just a matter of time before he hits the point where he can kill Renekton. And WE didn't know this, so that's why they Possibly could try and set something up here. They have a very good combo for fighting in the mid game. Very strong engage, a lot of CC and also a lot of damage. And of course, Renekton, he's the best Bruiser you can get in the mid game. So if they can set something up around the Dragon or in the mid lane here, it would be very good for them. This is very steady play from both these teams. And honestly, I feel it kind of falls into Cloud9's favor. I think they're finding themselves their feet here, fe feeling a little bit confident. We see the Zonya's Hourglass now completed by High. Meanwhile, Static Chief only just been completed for Suki. And that's the thing we have to remember. We talked about it back at level 1, how the WE lineup is full physical except for Annie. This simply means for Cloud9, as long as they can stack armor, the later they go into the game, the harder it is for WE to actually kill them. And that's also why we see the very early Sonya's here, also to stop some of the damage from Yasuo if he should jump onto high. That wind wall, we saw how effective it was earlier on in day four on Victus Gaming. Z-Type doing wonders with it, keeping... Actually, it was a Gragas at bay, it was a Peke's Gragas. And he's doing exactly the same thing. Dark Binding was blocked as well as the barrel. And we see Meteor's involved. His ulti now is the second thing, so you want to take less damage when he pops it. And Cloud9, they just want to pressure this mid turret and they want to get it down. Suki. Aggressive defensive work there. Up against three members of Cloud9. They weren't quite expecting that, I feel. And high, little mana left. I feel Maywell back away from this one. The rest of Cloud9, we do see Meteos run rotate around the side. Maywell look to go for a game. And if they can actually move up here with the minion wave, kill the turret, and then start the fight, it's very good for them. And we actually see Balls closing in here, attempting to go in behind, maybe. Cyclone Flash, but it's not going to work out too well. The Lemonation's going to pop that ultimate. Will he go down in time? No, he does proc off just in time. Gets the Dark Bunny on towards Ruo. Reset comes in for Meteos, but it's going to be WE that follow through. Explosive cast, forcing this Sneaky to be defensive. Balls trying to go aggressive on towards Wei Xiao. Wei Xiao taking so, so low. Balls is going huge right now. All over them. Suki Blitz managed to get taken down. He does get the knock but they have no follow-through. There's going to be Sneaky doing all the damage from the backside. Balls still alive. Sneaky gets dived on. Salmon gets one. Cannot get the second. High pops and Zonya's hourglass just at the critical time. And I believe it was a three for one. And such a risky engage by WE. Wukong pops his ultimate and then he flashes in. And it simply means they collapse onto elimination. The support used Yasuo ultimate, Wukong ultimate, Onto elimination, the rest of Cloud9 is there and turns the fight around. Meteos, he gets the reset he wants and he can then continue going on. And also high, he managed to actually get out on very low HP, simply meaning the fight it goes in favor here. Look here, they engage. Pops the ultimate from Wukong, flashes in then, and then they jump onto elimination, tables on him, Yasuo ultimate is on him. He didn't even die the first place, he actually go back in and kill him. Means there's a reset for Meteos. And meanwhile, Balls, he's just gonna come in here from the side, join in, straight one v one Wei Xiao, and just killing him instantly. The rest of Cloud9 can then come in here from behind, only two members left, and the damage from Renekton is not high enough to actually do more than just pick up a kill here, and then die. And I feel if Meteos had come in just a split second earlier, you saw him jump and he didn't get involved, so he didn't get that reset on the jump, he may well have been able to jump on Sukim as well. Instead, Still works out very well for Cloud9. They're starting out the Dragon. WE moving into position to try and counter. This is what we talked about as well in the pregame at the Analyst Desk, how WE, once they don't win the laning phase, they have a hard time actually deciding what to do. They just gave up a free Dragon as well to Cloud9 here, and the team fight again. 
They engaged very questionable onto elimination, piled all the damage onto the support, and didn't even kill him in the first place. Mm. So very risky play by them, very questionable play, and it could be actually the issue for WE. They don't know exactly what to do when they don't win early. Actually what we saw Fnatic doing earlier on today as well, piling on towards that support, not really focusing on the right targets as it is WE. They're going to chase. This is what we've seen them do. You talked about it. Once they lose that aggression, they'll still they'll, they'll actually counter it with more aggression. Yeah. They'll go full on aggression. And sometimes they'll just go on a heavy tilt. They just, they want to fight, they want to engage onto you. Cloud9 with great wave clear with the Gragas, with the Syria, making very high flame, even though they're five members to actually push up the wave to even get to the turret. They couldn't. There's always the risk of Morgana popping ultimate, hitting a binding onto you, and then the rest of Cloud9 just piles onto you. Look at the combo here for them. A binding from elimination, followed up by the ulti from high, shoots someone back into the team, into the face of Medias, gets the kill, gets the reset, and, Cloud and then W just have to back off. So very hard for them to actually do anything here, unless they can get the perfect engage, and not onto elimination. Blue invade for Cloud9. We do see Tsao Mei coming in there though, and I think that's going to be quickly defended by WE. It will be given across. Will Ruo take this one? He has taken the last few, so I'm expecting he wants to. Oh, Boomerang Blade does come out and lands nicely on towards Ruo. They don't get that blue buff. But again, all this pressure being forced from Cloud9 does buy balls more time on that top lane. And in terms of farming, it's almost caught up with Same. He's basically just doing what he can do on Shivana. Because as long as he keeps farming, he will keep getting stronger and stronger. We saw him in the last team fight, how he just 1v1, way shout. Just jump onto him, killed him. And ultimate actually coming down from high here, trying to sawn away WE. Could be caught, but look at that. Dark binding on Conan, quickly counters it. And Cloud9 keep that pressure pressured on towards the tower. That's what pressure generally does. We see Bulls <laughs> coming down there with the burning agony. And again, they keep on pushing towards that tower. Dark binding doesn't land on way shout. That would have been a kill. But Cyclone comes out. That's going to be catching all of Cloud9 out. They're bouncing in the air. They will get Ruo down, but can they follow through on towards it? Salmay gets aggressive, but he's just being controlled by the Dark Binding. Up in the top lane, we see Meteos. He got himself the kill on towards Zukin. Ruo also went down all early on. And it's actually a two for one for Cloud9, and they run for their lives. And once again, W goes in, Zukin, he pops his ultimate onto Shivana this time. So now we had Elimination, and now Balls. The support and the tank. They need to do more of this Yasuo ultimate. They need to hit a squishy target. Renekton is always going in to the back line. He's tanking everything and doing a very good job. They might be able to get this turret here because Wei Xiao double buff and very healthy. Yeah, Wei Xiao has been fairly quiet so far in this game. And if he'd have been caught out, I feel he would have been the focus target. But instead it was WE that went aggressive. And this time it worked out for them. They got an objective off the back of it. They got an objective. They still... Lost two members for it, sure. Technically, they lost the fight, but due to the fact that Caitlyn was more healthy and due to Renekton being healthy, they could actually push down afterwards, getting objective. So in the end, they got more gold from it. But still, the team fights have been questionable for them. And that's one thing Cloud9 have been doing well. And of course, again, we have to highlight this Morgana. We saw the binding onto Anna before when she actually tried to engage. Instant binding onto her, stopped the engage, and then Wukong has to go in, even though he was on 50%, and go towards Cloud9 and just have to tr try and pile in for WE side. So Cloud9 get themselves in and ward out. Check out that Baron. You can see how worried Lemonation was about being caught out going towards that bush. As it stands, he is safe. So everybody backing off, everybody buying. A lot of items coming out here. How do we gauge this one? It's 10-5 in kills, and Cloud9 do have themselves at 5,000 gold advantage. Yeah, we need to see when Yasuo actually picks up the Infinity Edge, how much damage he can put down once he gets to the right target, because Static Shift and Infinity Edge is the two key items on the Yasuo. It's where he hits his power spike with having a lot of damage. Meanwhile, Wukong, we have been brutalizing. We have the Elder Lizard for damage, and he's now going towards tank. I like that route. He can even go Black Cleaver, shred a lot of armor with his ultimate, because every time it actually deals damage, you apply a stack and with Renekton, with Yasuo, with Caitlyn, Armor Shred is very, very important. We need to see Last Whispers from them, Black Cleaver again, because Cloud9, they're just gonna stack armor. And there's double static ships as well, procking off if they all get a little bit claustrophobic and closed in. High finds himself some farm in this bottom lane. Wei Zhao was down there, but is immediately backed off to keep himself a little bit of distance. Medios. He's been a man that's been jumping around 3-1-3 on this Kha'Zix again. Again, it seems to be working well for him. And he will have his Last Whisper now, so he has the two armor penetration items for Kha'Zix. He has the Last Whisper and the Brutalize, so he's having so much burst damage when he actually jumps into the face of someone. And if he can get towards 
let's say Wei Xiao, very squishy, or let's say Conan, also very squishy, you will be able to burst them down almost instantly. Not quite sure Balls wanted to actually fight the Baron there, so he's just going to head on out. Sunfire Cape was uh, blocking off. He just managed to clear out that ward that WE had there. Lots of pings on towards high here from both teams. Actually, I think they're just simply saying there's a pink ward here. Yeah, he's taking the pink ward down the bottom there. Nothing coming from this one. Conan setting up. He's got Tibbers available. I'm wondering if he's going to try and make a play here for WE. And he's having the early distortion boots enchant onto him as well. So he's going to have less cooldown onto the flash because they want to have him flashing in with Tibbers. And then we have the Wukong ultimate afterwards. You have a lot of CC you pile onto them and then you jump in with the rest of the team. Zonya's Hourglass almost completed for Lemonation. That's not bad for your support. He's been collecting that gold and making good use of it, it seems. He is a long way ahead of Conan right now. So the Sonyas could actually signal that Elimination want to go into the middle of the team, yeah. pop his ultimate and then pop the Sonyas. There are two different types you can play Morgana support. The second one is where you stay with your AD carry and you just peel away the Bruces with your ultimate. But the Dragon is up here. Cloud9, both teams are actually in a very good position. We should be seeing a very important team fight. Yeah, we do see, but look at Cloud9. They're just not caring. They're pushing straight for that mid inner turret. And well... W are responding, but Cloud9 have got a great tactical advantage. They're going to take this turret before they get near. A very good move. They simply noticed WE being on the wrong side of the blue box, so they could just rotate up the mid lane here. They already had killed the first turret. Smart move by Cloud9, getting a turret, and the dragon is still up. And that just completely buys them time. Oh, they're jumping on Wei Xiao. Meteor's going a bit deep there. Has to pop that ultimate to go quickly evacuate. Cyclone catches three members. Elimination just managed to pop that ultimate. And they catch down on towards one. They get a second. They jump towards Sao Mei. They get a reset. They jump in again. And would you believe it's an ace for Cloud9? My god! That just turned that fight on its head. So Meteor's jumping in. Mollis has a bait actually flashing out instantly, followed up by Balls, and he jumps into the face of Wei Xiao and Conan, pushing them away from the team, and then the rest of Cloud9 just kills the members from WE, and they can finish this game. Can you taste the apple pie right now? Wow. Because Cloud9 certainly can. They've turned this game into a victory. Cloud9 defeat WE at the Intel Extreme Masters. And Cloud9 early game did everything correct, and WE, as soon as they came out of the laning phase, they had no idea what to do because they weren't the Hit, questionable team fights and Cloud9 well played. They just punished everything and crept over with the predictions. And High just stretching like it was just another day in the office there. Very well played by Cloud9. They were fairly confident and you got to give credit that bottom lane. Lemonation oh, yes. sneaky oh, played yes. brilliantly. And we talked about Morgana. We've been wondering where Morgana was all day long. And finally, he appears. It does wonders. We have to give MVP to the bot lane of Cloud9. They went up against Annie Caitlyn, Wei Xiao and Caitlyn. We were saying it's going to be a very hard lane. And then they just go in here and they actually win the lane on CS, going to the team fights, binding after binding from Elimination, landing perfectly, setting up so many things for Cloud9, and just beautiful play. Quick stats, 3-1-7 for Balls, 3-1-7 for Medias, 4-1-7 for High, 4-1-8 for Sneaky. Do not say they don't work as a team because everybody was involved in these kills. They ended up 15-5. Cloud9 will be going through to play the Taipei Assassins while Gambit will be playing WE. And with how dominant Cloud9 looked here, with how dominant TPA looked in the last game, it's going to be an insane game we have coming up with Cloud9 against TPA and Gambit against 